So uh, I've been studying this storm to some degree, but uh, it's a particularly interesting storm here with Winston. Well, it's one of the strongest storms on record for the Southern Pacific. Uh, it actually, uh, initially they had estimated it to be the strongest storm ever, but after some uh, reanalysis, it looks like it's probably going to come in third place behind uh, Monica and Pam. Final intensity estimate is about 155 knots or a little bit higher than that in miles per hour, 165 or so. When it actually went by Fiji uh, a few days before that, they posted warnings for some of these islands here. And then instead of continuing on to the uh, south, it, it turned, came over here, and then uh, basically did a U-turn back towards Fiji, which is um, a rather unusual track. Um, so the uh, Koro Island was the one that really took the brunt of it. Um, that's this little island here. Uh, you can see, so here, um, this is a picture from this spot. Those are the homes before and after. You can see that they were just uh, basically completely destroyed. Um, so here on Oahu, Hawaii's local chapter has been quick to be in contact with the International Red Cross Foundation to determine what the most appropriate response might be here in the United States. And then we started to get calls here from people who had either friends or family that, uh, that lived there and, so, and that were being impacted um, by the storm. And so from there, uh, we looked at what the International Federation of the Red Cross, what were their response plans, and what were those initial reports so we could report back to the people who were concerned about their relatives, yeah? And so we got that information. And um, the American Red Cross, for the most part, uh, um, will be working on the fundraising appeal. So um, just raising funds to help with that relief effort. And that relief effort, for the most part, will be organized through the Australian region of the Federation of the Red Cross to help support, because it, it falls in their area. There, does it, if it's widespread damage, we would be continuing to work very closely with the county to look at bulk distribution points. How do we, um, how do we distribute food in a timely way? Um, and, and then work on um, the individual family recovery. So um, we'd be opening either centers or if it's more concentrated damage, going door to door and working with people through outreach and making sure that they get the, their needs addressed. Have seven days worth of supplies due to our, our isolation here. Um, and obviously it would, we have limited stock on island. We don't have a lot of warehouses here. So once those items are off the shelves, it will take uh, quite a bit of time to resupply, right, the items that are lost. So that's why we encourage people to have seven days worth of supplies. The key things that they need are seven days of food for each individual, and then, um, and then seven days worth of water. And that's a gallon of water per person per day. That water isn't just for drinking, that's also for sanitation use. Okay, so those are the most important things. The, we live on remote islands, we need to prepare for ourselves.